In this video, I will show you how to add or how to change VLAN ID on Mac. This process is very simple and easy. Before we proceed, make sure that you have any of this USB to our J45 adapter. Without this device, you cannot change the VLAN ID. Let's proceed. Click on the Apple menu at the top left. Choose System Settings. Go to Network. Notice that I currently have this LAN adapter. In my case, I'm using this USB Type-C to our J45 adapter. We can click on it to view the details. You can see here my current TCP IP settings and also my DNS IP addresses. Let's go back to Network. At the bottom, you can see this three dots with down arrow. Click on it to expand. We have some few other options here. Choose Manage Virtual Interfaces. We will add the VLANs from here. Good thing with Mac is we can run multiple VLANs concurrently. This means, we can connect to multiple networks with different VLANs at the same time. No need to change the default VLAN unlike Windows operating systems. Also, Windows operating systems run on one VLAN only for single Ethernet adapter. To add a VLAN, click on the plus sign icon. Choose new VLAN. For the VLAN name, you can put any name you prefer. But of course best practice is to put the name as your reference. Assuming we are going to add VLAN 200 and this is for admin network. We can name it as admin for our reference or we can simply put VLAN 200. This is for us to easily identify the VLAN or VLANs. Next is the tag. This is where we specify the VLAN ID or VLAN number. Since we want to add VLAN 200 then we will put 200. We need also to choose the Ethernet adapter we want to tag the VLAN. In my case, I only have one LAN adapter so I only have one option available. Notice that the Wi-Fi adapter is not available. We cannot change the Wi-Fi VLAN ID because that one will be configured on the AP or router. Once everything is set, click Create to apply the changes. We can now see the newly created VLAN. The BSD name is just a number sequence. The first one is VLAN 0 so if we are going to add another VLAN then the BSD name would be VLAN 1. We will go to that later on. Click done to close the window. Under other services you can see the VLAN 200 and the status is red and it shows it is not connected. This virtual interface is trying to get IP address from the DHCP server. So if you did not configure the DHCP server for VLAN 200 then you need to manually assign the IP address. We will go that later on. Since I configured the DHCP server for VLAN 200 then we will just wait for it to receive IP address. Now, the status turns to green and it says connected. This means, we have successfully added the new VLAN. Tick on it to view the details. We can see that the addressing mode is using DHCP. We can also see here the IP settings and DNS IP addresses. If there's no DHCP server configured for this VLAN then we need to assign the IP address manually. Again, we need to select the VLAN. Go to Details. Choose TCP IP. Choose the addressing mode to manually. Enter the IP address you prefer. Make sure it's on the same subnet with VLAN 200. Make sure to enter the correct details or else you cannot access the VLAN 200 network. Once everything is set then click OK to save the changes. We can see here the newly configured IP settings. Notice the DNS servers doesn't have any IP address. This is because we changed the TCP IP settings to manually so the DHCP settings will follow. We need to configure also the DNS if you want to access internet through this VLAN. Go to details again. Choose DNS. You can see that no DNS servers available. Tick on the plus sign to add. We can use the primary Google DNS, 8.8.8.8 is our primary DNS. For the secondary DNS, we can use the Cloudflare primary DNS which is 1.1.1.1. This will be the backup if in case our primary DNS is unreachable. You can add more DNS IP addresses and also you can use different DNS IP addresses if you prefer. Click OK to save the changes. You can now see the newly configured DNS servers. Notice that the default VLAN 1 is still present. We did not change the default VLAN, 
we only added new VLAN. Again, for Mac, we can add multiple VLANs if we want. Let's add more VLAN. Same process, expand the network advanced options. Choose Manage Virtual Interfaces. Tick on the plus sign to add. Choose New VLAN. We will add VLAN 250. Just so you know, VLAN 200 and VLAN 250 has been configured on my gateway so we should be able to join both networks. Tag is the VLAN ID which is 250. Again, I only have one LAN network adapter so we cannot see other options. Click Created to save the changes. We can now see the newly created VLAN. We have now added two VLANs which is VLAN 200 and VLAN 250. Notice the new created VLAN 250, the BSD name is VLAN 1. This will just follow the sequence so you can ignore it. It's not representing the VLAN ID or VLAN number. Click OK to save the changes. Let's wait for it to receive IP address from DHCP server. And now we're connected. We can tick on it to view the details. The mode is DHCP and you can see the IP details received. And now, we are concurrently connected to multiple networks. Three networks for LAN adapter plus the Wi-Fi network. We can verify all these network connections by trying to ping the router or the gateway IP address. We will test first the VLAN 1 which is the default VLAN. Open a terminal and we will ping the router or gateway IP address which is 10.100.100.1. We received a response so we're connected to VLAN 1. Next is the VLAN 200. We will ping the gateway IP address which is 10.200.200.1. We have received a response. Next is the VLAN 250. Ping 10.250.250.1 Success Lastly the Wi-Fi Choose the Wi-Fi network adapter Choose details Go to TCP IP We can see here the router or default IP address We will try to ping 192.168.0.2 which we can we have verified that we are connected to multiple networks using only one Ethernet adapter. Let's try to add a VLAN which is not present or configured on my gateway. I'll try to add VLAN 50. Again, I haven't configured this VLAN 50 on my gateway. Let's wait for it to see what happens. It shows self-assigned IP. Let's check the details. We did not receive any IP address. This is the APIPA or automatic private IP addressing. These are the type of IP address automatically assigned to your network adapter if there's no DHCP server that provides them IP addresses. Now, to delete a VLAN, we have few ways to do it. We can simply click on the VLAN we want to delete. Choose Delete Service. Make inactive if you just want to disable the virtual interface. Since want to delete then we will choose Delete Service. Tick Delete to verify. Yes to proceed. Alternatively, we can use the network advanced options. This would be faster choice also if we want to delete multiple VLANs. Tick on it to select then choose the minus sign to remove the selected entry. Yes to proceed. I want to delete all the VLANs configured so I will do the same process. We have now successfully removed the VLAN interfaces added. Under other services you can see the BSD numbers. You can also delete this services if you prefer. Just simply click on it then and choose delete service. Tick delete to verify. Yes to proceed. We can delete other services if we want. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.